just a symposium we have we have a better understanding of the session uh, dr zakirud uh, swami ji has been very kind he has is a very learned personality and uh, i would not think that we would have many amongst us who would understand he is from the ramakrishna mission i know they are very learned people we have met many from such missions and they speak with lot of sense and straight forwardness which we ourselves may not have so much knowledge if he is presenting a point we should appreciate that and the other speakers should be given due respect uh, thank you uh, the zakir would like to have some comments if i'm very thankful to swami ji the learned speaker for spending so much time and answering so many questions i would love to comment on each and every answer since i am a student of comparative religion but since time is short i will just choose three of the questions just to give my comments and the first question posed was regarding reincarnation and swami ji rightly said that in hinduism they believe that if the person has done equal good and bad he is reborn as a human being if he does more he reaches a higher state if he does more evil than good he is born as a subhuman level rightly so swami ji rightly described the hindu philosophy which even i have read and he rightly said that the hindu philosophy it says that if you do more evil then you are born subhuman being like maybe like a dog like a cockroach or philosophy i agree with him my question that i would like to clarify is that today there is more evil in the world evil is on the increase in the world so i am asking as a student of science and a student of logic that if evil is increasing the population of human beings should decrease but in the world we come to know that the population of human beings are increasing so how do you how do you reconcile since i am a student of comparative religion it's my pleasure to learn more about hinduism i would like how do you reconcile the theory of hinduism about incarnation when evil is increasing the population of human beings should decrease but we find that the population of human beings are increasing that's my comment if you want to yeah. you can rebuttal or exactly. oh, i would like to speak about the second question also now one by one please silence please we thank you you have been a very patient and an enthusiastic audience you have been appreciative please don't get restless i think that is not a very important question uh, the living beings in this uh, on the face of the earth is so immense so immense so some of them must have merited to become human beings and they are coming so we cannot uh, um, uh, clarify and say specifically this this is the this is the, these are all unimportant details i think i request dr knight not to give much emphasis on this so oh, thank you we close that point just one other point i'm just i want to clear fiction since uh, swami ji said that he has not read the bhavishya purana since i'm a student of comparative religion i have read the bhavishya purana so i would like to comment on the brother he posed the question that is the prophet muhammad peace be upon him mentioned the bhavishya purana and since i would like to learn from the swami if i don't know and if swami doesn't know i would like to throw some light that bhavishya purana says in parva 3 khand 3 adhyay 3 shlokas 5 to 8 i'm giving the translation that there will be a malaycha a malaycha in sanskrit means a foreigner speaking a foreign language there will come a malaycha a spiritual teacher who will come along with his companions his name shall be muhammad and raja bhoj after giving this mahadev arab a bath in the panch garb he will give his presence of reverence and speak to him with respect and say i pay obeisance to you o pride of human kind you have created a great force you have collected a great force to kill the devil if you analyze this bhavishya purana bhavishya purana is one of the puranas as the, as swami ji rightly said there are 18 puranas which were compiled by maharishi vyas into 18 volume in his parts the bhavishya purana this says malaycha a foreigner speaking a foreign language a spiritual teacher whose name shall be muhammad will come and raja bhoj after giving this mahadev arab the sanskrit word is marusthal meaning 
place of a sandy track or a desert. This man which the Bhavishya Purana speaks about the future is the coming of a man from the sandy desert whose name shall be Muhammad. And Raja Bhuj will say that this person is the pride of humankind. As the Holy Quran rightly says in Surah Al-Anbiya chapter 21 verse number 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ That we have sent thee, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, as a mercy to the whole humankind, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to all the worlds. This is the first prophecy. There are several prophecies in Bhavishya Purana. I'd just like to throw light on one more verse. In that's in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhaita 3, Shlokas 10 to 27. It says that the Malaychas has spoiled the land of the Arabs. Arya Dharat is not to be found there. There was an devil who had been earlier killed by God Almighty, but now he has been sent by a more powerful enemy. These enemies will be guided to the true path and the devil will be corrected by a man known as Muhammad and further says that a shrewd man in the guise of Pichachas in the angelic disposition will tell Raja Bhoj that you need not go to the foolish land of the Pichachas for I will purify you by my kindness where you are referring when the Muslim comes to India they will be purified the prophecy continues that Arya Dharm will prevail, the religion of truth, the Deen al Haq will prevail. And he says that I have been sent by Ishwar Paramatma. My followers will be a man who is circumcised, who will not have a tail on his head, that's a Shendi, who will grow a beard, who will create a revolution, who will give the call for prayers, that is the Adhan, who will eat all lawful things, but will not have the flesh of swine. And the Quran says in no less than four different places. In Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 173. In Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 3. In Surah Anam chapter 6 verse 145. And Surah Nahal chapter number 16 verse 115. Hurramat alaykumul maitu tu waddamu wa lahmil khinzeer. Wa ma uhilla li gairilla bi. That forbidden for you for food are ah? dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine and any food on which any name besides Allah has been invoked. So Quran prohibits the eating of flesh of swine and Bhavishya Purana says the same. These followers of Ishwar Paramatma will not have swine. They will not be purified by holy shrubs, but be purified by warfare and they will correct the irreligious people. These people will be called Musalman. This is in brief what the Bhavishya Purana speaks about the coming of a beloved prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. That was just to give my information about Bhavishya Purana. And as the sister asked... Uh, my reaction to it, uh, uh, will you permit me to say? Uh, sure, you are most welcome. No, I thought you said you didn't need the Bhavishya Purana. No problem. As far as uh, the Hindus are concerned, I told you in the beginning that the supreme book authority for us is Vedas. And even among the Vedas, Upanishads, they are the supreme authority. The Itihasas, Puranas, everything, or the, the, the function of the Puranas, Itihasas, or other books in Hinduism is to interpret, to make the Upanishadic ideas more clear to the common people according to their level of intellectual understanding. So, Upanishads comes only second in authority. The prime authority is the Vedas, the Upanishads. I accept the Upanishads as the supreme and therefore I, have, I do not give much importance to what the Upanishads speak because I, I, have, I, I have direct access to the uh, Upanishads and therefore it doesn't mean that I disrespect. No, I respect. I respect every, Upani, every uh, Purana but I give the first place, the most important place to the Upanishads, to the Vedas. That is my reaction to it. Thank you very much, Swamiji. And I do agree with you that the Hindus first believe in most authentic are the Vedas, then Upanishads, then Puranas. I do agree with him. Swamiji does not believe in the Puranas or does not give it respect. I don't mind. But this is just the quotation of the Puranas. I, I, don't I didn't say I don't respect. I do respect. But, but, do, but, but I have in, not read it. Uh, in importance. That's right. I do agree with you, Swamiji. Thank you very much. Just a comment on choosing your own God in life. The Quran gives you permission to choose your own God in life. The Islamic principle. And I quoted a part of that verse in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2. Verse number 256 says, There is no compulsion religion. Truth stands out clear from error. If you hold the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have held the most strong 
hand that never leaves you. And if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reading the evil, verse number 257.